All right, everyone, another remarkable science breakthrough after much testing. Scientists have managed to develop a probiotic paste which can be applied to star coral, allowing it to resist certain diseases. Um, this is uh, fascinating because it ties in with something that I've spoken of several times before over the last few years. A subscriber once tipped me off uh, with regards to the existence of probiotic medicine. Not for gut health, of course, probiotics are obviously good for that, but in a surgical setting and things like that. And the idea is that if you can develop a proper probiotic, you can replace normal sterilization. I mean, you'd still have to wipe things down once in a while. You can replace that with effectively colonies of uh, totally harmless bacteria that predate upon the kind of viruses and bacteria that would infect a human. Think about the surgical applications. You create a paste or a gel or something like that uh, that is filled with a bacteria that predates upon other bacteria. It's harmless to the human body, but it's deadly to viruses and bacteria. Person comes in with an enormous gash on their leg. You apply the paste, and it acts much better than an antiseptic because slowly those bacteria and viruses are being literally gnawed upon by these other life forms, basically. I've thought it would be helpful if we could mass produce macrophages, for example, um, for topical conditions and for other reasons. Macrophages, of course, for those of you that didn't pay attention in biology, are rather large uh, microscopic life forms, and they tend to, what they say, engulf um, other living things uh, that are foreign to the body. So what they do is they literally eat them. They engulf them, and then they destroy them, they break them down, and over time, the macrophage, eventually, having eaten enough bacteria and so forth, will replicate, and then you've got a new macrophage. They can uh, destroy pretty much anything in their path. They are the warriors of your body. That's what's keeping you alive. If macrophages didn't exist, you would not exist. Let's put it that way. Uh, there are other cells in the body, of course, T cells, B cells, and so forth, that have an immune response and, and so forth. Uh, but macrophages are effectively the first line of defense. When you get a little boo-boo, macrophages pour into that, and any bacteria that try to invade your body, they start to eat. That's, I know that this sounds rather elementary and funny, but this is basically what happens. I've often thought they should try to figure out a way to replicate macrophages on a mass scale. Um, and I do not know whether they are genetic um, uh, specific to people based on things like blood type or anything like that. I'm not 100% sure, so this might not be actionable. But I've often thought they should at least look into the concept. Maybe create some sort of macrophage that is body neutral or something like that, turn it into a gelatinized form and use that on wounds because those wounds will heal pretty goddamn quick now, won't they? You know, probiotic therapy in general is the concept that instead of trying to eliminate life forms in the immediate vicinity, in order to, like using carbonic acid or, or modern antiseptics, uh, carbonic acid was the first big one. Uh, by the way, I think it was... Garfield, President Garfield, that died because they were probing his wound and they didn't use carbonic acid. I think it was Garfield. It might have been McKinley. I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember which one it was. Whatever. Um, what happens is that when you sterilize the area, you haven't fully sterilized it. There are still going to be harmful bacteria. You have to be basically locked in a vault after having gone through like three or four cleansing sequences in order to make sure that there's not even one virus or bacterium in the chamber in order to be perfectly antiseptic and then spray everything with acid, basically. Um, with probiotics, it's different. You could create effectively um, a probiotic solution. This should be invented. Spray every surface with it. And the bacteria that you're introducing are harmless. On their own, they're harmless, and they predate upon the bad bacteria and viruses, again, like a macrophage spray or something like that. A thin layer that coats every surface and prevents 
basically anything else from being able to compete. It would have to be bioengineered, of course, to be highly competitive and highly predacious upon bacteria. This brings up ethical concerns that should be all too obvious. Also, I would note, probiotics can be used for other things. For instance, did you know if you take moss, just regular old moss, Put it into a blender with a mixture of water and yogurt, yogurt being probiotic, of course, and filled with calcium as well, uh, plain yogurt. You don't want to use flavored yogurt. And you spray this or splash this on a bunch of rocks that moss will begin growing everywhere. Uh, this was uh, something that I saw in a Wiccan book, actually, oddly, when I was a little child. Uh, I was one of those kids, you know? Sorry, I'm just clanking along. Anyway, uh, you can do that. You can even decorate with it if you want to. You can paint it onto surfaces, and as long as it stays moist enough, it'll grow moss. So that's how you spell out words with moss, basically. Has nothing to do with the main story. Anyway, the greatness of probiotics is severe, and I am not the only one that has talked about this. Again, a subscriber told me about the basic concept years ago. I looked it up and found, damn, this actually makes sense. You're saying that if you paint your wound with yogurt, basically, it would probably be more effective than using an antiseptic. Now, I'm being a little bit on the glib side, but the basic medical premise is actually real. The basic premise is flood the area with good bacteria that won't hurt you, and you don't have to worry so much, because they're going to eat the bad bacteria. It'll, it'll definitely bacterial infections, probiotics are probably the only thing we're going to be able to do about some of these resistant species. They're no longer responding to most of the antibacterial formula that we use. Um, and we're running out, <clears throat> even with AI, we're running short on antibacterials that actually work for some of the so-called superbugs. Well, then, simply destroy the superbugs by creating a bug that eats the bugs. You know, it's sort of like getting rid of cockroaches by introducing a handful of spiders into your home. Only the spiders don't bite you, they only go after the cockroaches. That's the whole point. Imagine you could bioengineer spiders that wouldn't bite humans but would kill any other insect in sight. That's basically the plan that we're working on. And it's a realistic one. It's possible. In fact, it's highly plausible that this could work. You know, it makes sense. The superbugs aren't going to last very long now, are they? Especially when, uh, how many bacteria would eat other bacteria? Especially bacteria, viruses to an extent, too. Uh, how many exist? Oh, probably millions of them. Well, then simply isolate them, mass-produce them, and deploy them. You know, you'll have little armies. Sort of like, I am very happy. There's now a nest of the uh, red ants out in the backyard. If carpenter ants ever show up, all I need is a handful. That's literally all I need. I'll wipe out your whole fucking civilization. That's basically the premise. You're introducing something into the area that will compete with the things that you don't want to be there and destroy them. Ah, it works wonders. It's also very fun to watch, at least with regards to the ants. That's about all. Peace out.